Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Friday Ramblings. I am here as always to bring you your slice of pop culture entertainment. A little bit of joy, a little bit of shine, and a little bit of nerdiness. Because there ain't nothing wrong with being smart. So, we're going to do a little bit of a novel fun times here because we're going to discuss BAM! Great Train Robbery by Michael Crichton. But, even though it is a good piece of fiction, it's also not a good piece of fiction because this is technically only partial fiction. Yep, that's right folks, this particular Michael Crichton novel is based on a true story. Everybody's favorite marketing term, everybody's favorite slice of most likely doesn't mean anything because of how loosely we can interpret based and true. But this time, it is a piece of highly documented true crime history. The Great Train Robbery, also referred to as the Great Gold Robbery of 1855, was an event that, in its simplest put terms, involved four men stealing a big old big 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 stack of gold from a moving train. I know by modern Hollywood standards that doesn't sound all that impressive, but again, we're talking something that was done for real Z's. Legitimately, in the real world, some dude got together with his gang, conspired to obtain keys to the safes that were being transported on a train, and while the train was in motion, not only snuck into the secured train car, but got the safes open got the gold out, and got away. That's right. They were not initially caught. Now, I'm not going to get too much into the real world history of it because, frankly put, as I said, it's a really fascinating piece of true crime history. And I would highly encourage all my listeners here to go ahead and research it because researching can be fun and Frankly put, there have been several different books and documentaries on the real-life gold robbery, so you can pick and choose your perspective on things. We're going to stick to Michael Crichton's novel, in which he takes the events, by and large sticks to the verified documented details, and puts his own very classic very Michael Crichton spin on it. That's right, folks. Because he is Michael Crichton. The man who created the highly beloved, long-lasting medical drama show ER. The man who gave us Jurassic Park. A film franchise that, while it did kind of hit a low point for a few years, has been beautifully revived and is working on its sixth film as we speak. Along with many, many other books, many of which were adapted for movies. Some of those movies weren't really all that great. I'm sorry. Uh, Sphere works so much better as a book than it does a movie. Like, no contest. But that's just my personal opinion. And of course, as references in this edition, the infamous Disclosure, which is actually kind of a really interesting book because one of the great things about books, and this does come back to Great Train Robbery, I promise folks, is that since books tend to have a lot looser ideology of length to it, because you know a movie is a defined length. You make a 90-minute movie, 
it's going to be 90 minutes to watch. That's it. Books, well, how long it takes you to read a book all depends on you as an individual reader. For some people, this could be, you know, binged in a single day sitting. Others, yeah, you know, two, three days, read a little bit at the end of the day before you go to bed. Some people, though, they see this as a very daunting stack, and they would probably spend, you know, a good long whoop, week or more trying to get through this. And you know what? All of those are perfectly valid. If you are reading, and you are enjoying what you read, read it at any pace you like. It is you, and it is your experience, and there is no judgment to be had here. But the key of this is one of the things I love about The Great Train Robbery, and why Michael Crichton was a great person to handle writing it. One of his greatest strengths is, as a writer who is science-minded, which would explain his many science fiction based books. And for reference folks, for those of you who don't know, he did go to medical school before catching on big as a novelist. So yes, the man is science and medicine based in his thinking processes in a lot of ways. Again, one of those reasons he are worked as a medical drama, he actually didn't know a thing or two about, you know, making sure people don't die. But anyway, we don't want to go into a full Michael Crichton speech here. That's not the point of the video. It's to review a specific book that is oft overlooked in his library as it was written before Jurassic Park really made him like a nationally known name and, you know, a lister for years there, but it is a wonderful one because besides being a crime novel set in the 1800s, it is, as I said, like many of Michael Crichton's books, has one of his strengths as an author, which is the small details, especially when it comes to logical things, such as planning a robbery and the thousand tiny little things that can go wrong that you have to pre-plan for. So, let's get into our hard facts here. Publication date of The Great Train Robbery was originally May 1975, and it was the third book printed under his name. However, his 13th novel overall as his first 10 novels there were written under a pen name because that's what writers do. It was originally published in the USA by Alfred E. Knopf then a division of Random House. It is currently published by Avon, which is currently an imprint of HarperCollins Publishers. Now, the original and real Great Gold Robbery took place on May 22, 1855. And the book generally sticks to that. The majority of the book takes place in London. Uh, we're going we're gonna to say the greater London area because there's a little bit that takes place outside of the city that most people would think of as London, as it is a major metropolitan. But, yes, it is the mid-1800s, so there is a historical element to this. And, as I said, the big, most interesting thing about the novel is breaking down how the gang pulled the heist off. It's like this. You see this? I know, we did this before, but you see this? Okay, like... That much of it, you know, more than half of the book, actually, hey, it's probably more like that. That much of it, and no, I'm not being super abusive. This is, uh, this is an old copy. 
So, yeah, folks, I've done a lot of reading through it. I'm not damaging some priceless, you know, first print or anything. God knows. First of all, if I had a first print of any Michael Crichton book, it would not be handled. Especially one that goes back to the mid-70s. That's older than I am. Even a first print paperback. No, no, no. This is... Actually, which printing is this? It's definitely a later printing because it references Disclosure, which was his top book at the time. Um, let's see... Hmm. I don't actually see reference to real quick off the top of my head which printing it is. But as I said, it's definitely a later printing. Um, so no, don't feel bad that I'm messing around. But yeah, like Yeah, the, the majority of the book is the prep. The crime itself really doesn't take that much time to describe because you're on a train and you have a small window of time between stops. So, no, it's not going to be a very long sequence of actually pulling the crime off. It's just a couple chapters of the book. And then there's some epilogue stuff of, you know, what happened to the criminals after the fact. But that's the story of it is, who are these people who managed to pull off something that up to this point had previously been thought impossible? Trains had been robbed beforehand, but they were robbed when they were at a stopping point. This is a rare case. This was a train robbed while in motion with nobody being aware until it got to its eventual scheduled stop. At which point the safes were looked at as they were being, getting ready to move. So let's break down who your characters are. Now I am going to note the novel does change the names of, of all of the main characters mostly so that Michael himself would feel more at ease about taking a few liberties to make it a better story instead of just a pure historical documentary. Which, again, is perfectly fine. Because that's the thing people have to remember. You can say something's based on a true story, that doesn't mean everything in it is 100% factual. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in the fiction section. You're admitting that you were inspired by a specific real life event, but you are taking liberties with the details for the sake of telling a better story. That's why it's in the fiction section. It's not all true. But we are gonna go with the novel's fictional names for the characters. Your main character, who we spend the most amount of time hanging out with, is Edward Pierce, a professional burglar who poses as a gentleman amongst his upper-class acquaintances in Victoria, England. One of the great strengths of this character is that it is admitted that Edward Pierce itself is one of multiple aliases we see the man using over the course of the novel. And while we do see him at work, he makes a point of keeping everybody at a distance and keeping everybody guessing by only telling them what they need to know for him to get what he needs out of them. Thus, here you have the main character of a book that is ultimately the most mysterious character in the book. This is a very interesting approach to make. Crichton saved his detail work for the logistics, you know, the logistics, tried to say two words at once, of the robbery itself and the planning of it, not 
trying to give you this super deep psychological look into the robber. Sometimes the mystery is better than the explanation. We also have Robert Agar, a screwsman who is a criminal skilled with copying keys and picking locks. He is in many ways the biggest and most important gear in the machine that is the robbery because hey you can't get gold out of a safe that doesn't belong to you if you can't break into the safe so he himself is pretty much equal in authority and importance to Edward Pierce even though Pierce is the big planner and plotter Agar is the guy that's going to do most of the legwork. We also have, to a lesser extent, Barlow, who is a violent thug and former mugger who serves Edward Pierce loyally as his cabbie, although he occasionally uses his thug and mugging background to do other things for Pierce. Miss Miriam, who is Edward Pierce's mistress, generally regarded as highly attractive by multiple characters in the book, who is an actress by trade, but uses those skills to be more of a con artist. Multiple times she disguises herself as various other people to allow Edward Pierce to get to what he needs in order to pull the robbery off. Now, that's pretty much all the plot I'm going to give you because I really, really think you should check the book out. I don't want to get into a ton of spoilers. Uh, the most I'm going to say about it is that the book being a historical piece does, at times, as I've said about some other stuff I've reviewed, Involves some concepts that would not be 100% comfortable with a lot of people here in 2021. You know, there is very frank, very honest, to the point of brutal, depictions of the class system that was part of London at the time. This is one of the important keys to Edward Pierce as a criminal is in that he has created this identity of a rich gentleman who is part of the noble upper class even though he is anything but noble as well as references to prostitution being one of those things that is known but still technically illegal. It's like, well, you know, as long as you don't do it too blatantly in front of the th law authorities and, you know, the prostitutes who don't try to rob the Johns, you know, we're just going to look the other way. Honestly, there's worse crimes in the city. You know, that kind of attitude that, well, frankly, still exists in a lot of countries. And I'm not saying morally if that's a great attitude or really what my moral stance on prostitution is, but it exists. Now, in this case, it does go to a slightly different level as due to very backwards thinking about medical conditions and what causes diseases and how to cure diseases, there is a point where due to the existence of prostitution and the fact that age of consent laws in various places including England were lower in the mid 1800s than they are now it is not widely touched on and super descriptive but again fair warning folks there is an important plot point that is, you know, something Edward Pierce does in order to 
get what he needs to pull off the robbery. That involves a full-grown adult with some years to spare on that legal adult part. Paying a girl who is preteen age to engage in sexual intercourse with him. It's a thing. It's there. I know that's, as I said, that's something that, depending on how you feel about a lot of things, morally and ethically, you would not be comfortable reading. But in the 1850s, that's just something that happened. So in order to show a, a story and, and show events that would have been very possible at that time period with these kind of people involved, these things are going to come up. So that's really, that's the biggest scene that I think people need to look out for on a, okay, you might have to set the book down and take a deep breath after this scene because you're not ready for it. It does catch you unawares the first time. You're like, wait, why, what? You're kidding. That's just, that's got to be complete nonsense. He was, he just wanted to write something shy. And then it's like, no, no, really, go. Like, go talk to some, some people that, you know, study that time period in, in England and, you know, Look at historical records. It's like, no, that's actually not that insane a scenario. But sticking more to the goodness of the reviews and the awesomeness that is The Great Train Robbery, and thus why it is a book that I have read and reread and reread and will continue to reread at random intervals throughout my life, and that is. As I said at the top of all this, Michael Crichton does an incredible job with details and a heist story is all about the details. Edward Pierce is a mysterious, charismatic man who, despite several things popping up over the course of the prep and even the robbery itself that did not go the way he wished them to or even expected them to, he manages to improv and tweak his plans as they go until he gets what he wants. The best part is, it is that same concept of no matter how well you plan, things are going to happen that are out of your control that lies at the heart of how the crime eventually came to light. I mean, not the obvious, hey, they got to the stop, they grabbed the safes, and we're like, wow, these safes are really light, much lighter than they, we expected them to be. Clink, oh my god, the gold's missing. But the who pulled it off and how they pulled it off part, it all happens because the unexpected popped up after the fact and resulted in one of the members of the gang confessing what happened to try to get the courts to go a little lighter on him. Or her. Maybe it was Miss Miriam. You're going to have to read to find out. I love that cover. The big old lights on the front of the train and the steam and everything. That's just... I'd love to get a copy of like this image without all this text. Maybe just like the Great Train Robbery in smaller font in the corner. But I would love to just see a clean version of this cover. That would make a great poster. Wonderful book art. You know, gets you intrigued. You're like, oh my god, this train looks like it's just barreling right at me. And it's a robbery with the train? Did, did they steal the train itself? Did they steal something on the train? I've got, I've got to look through this to figure it out. Wonderful cover. Some of the other covers of different editions, eh, not so much. But this one, definitely a great cover image. Love it. Now, I'm a big Michael Crichton fan. Um, I do have several books in his collection. We'll, I'm sure we'll talk about others other days. For now, though, this has been your quick and easy, down and dirty coverage of The Great Train Robbery. As I have said, it manages to stay in print, so it should not be hard tracking down a copy. 
or read it electronically if you're an ebook kind of person. It is out there. It is not super obscure, despite the fact that the story is. Ooh, look at that. 75, 20, 46 years old. We're coming up on the 50th anniversary of this novel in a few years. Hey, if we're all still here in 2025, maybe we'll do a, another video discussing more about it. If you really don't like books, but you want to get a little bit of slice of Michael Crichton's goodness, guess what, folks? The good news is that this was adapted into a film starring the great Sir Sean Connery, along with Donald Sutherland and Leslie Ann Down. Uh, screenplay was actually um, adapted by Michael Crichton, who also directed it, so it's definitely going to keep a lot of his vibe and feel to it. Let me see, who else was in the cast? It's, ooh, let's see, uh, Alan Webb, Robert Lang... Peter Benson, Janine Davitsky, Pamela Salem. But yeah, it was, let's see, that film came out in 1978. So only, so very quickly after the novel came out, it was adapted to a film. Check, you know, track that film down on your favorite DV, Blu-ray, or streaming options. Or, if you're still into the cable TV, check some of your favorite classic movie channels. See if they have a listing for it coming up. It's all good fun, folks. And, that's what we're all about here at Roulette Productions and on the Friday Ramblings. Having fun with the things that entertain us. You want somebody to get really angry and scream at you and tell you something sucks, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go to a different channel. We keep it on the down low and mellow, fellow. So I hope you come back next week. We're going to have discussion about something different. It's not going to be Michael Crichton, but it will be fun. It will be interesting. And it will be Possibly a little critical, but criticism that is constructive and healthy. And that cover, a train's coming for you. Toot, 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 toot. Better get on the train, because you can't rob it if you let it run you over. And we're going to keep barreling down the tracks every Friday for you. So, subscribe, like, comment. And come on back every time you get a notice of another video. Bye-bye.